Most people visit Southern Utah to explore its amazing national parks. Zion, Bryce, Canyonlands, Arches, and Capitol Reef are all located within a few hour drive through Southern Utah. We've been to all of them, and while they are so incredibly worthy of exploring, it's not the only thing to do in Southern Utah. This week, we're gonna show you some of the amazing things to do in Southern Utah outside of national parks. Starting with Mystic Hot Springs. Oh yeah. Insta blew this place up. Totally came here just because we saw some really awesome pictures online. There's like loads of pools here. You have to make a reservation to come soak. It is on private property and the, the property is very unique. It's like a farm. There's ducks and peacocks and I just heard a chicken and a rooster. And yeah, that's what we were woken up to this morning. We stayed at the RV park, which I just come to soak. This is what you really want. This yeah. is the main show. So we're gonna go to the some upper pools and see if we have more water in those. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it feels so good. Oh, it feels so good. Oh. This is cool. It's so different from the other hot springs we've been enjoying lately. Obviously, this is man-made. But the orange color from, like, the minerals flowing in the hot spring is so cool. It's, like, taken over the tub. The views can't be beat as well. We only get two hours for soaking, so we're gonna put the camera down and take in the vibes. Chainsaw so adds to this. <laughs> Woo! That's why this is here. Hi. We. It's steamy, man. This is definitely like 105 plus. This pool. Oh man, I'm getting lightheaded. Ooh. This is nice. The view here is amazing overlooking the valley and the mountains beyond it. And the kind of rustic repurposed farmhouse feel definitely adds to the, to the vibe here. They do offer full service camping and these rad like vintage buses that they've redone inside. Although the sites are a little on level and the RV slips, but still it's here, it's available. I think Instagram might've shined a brighter light on this place. And that's not a bad thing, it's just that this is somebody's like house that you're coming to, to enjoy their little slice of heaven and just expect a super chill, rustic experience when you get here. Right, like a peak of one of the mountains or something, but holy crap, the view from up here is insane. This is beautiful though. Grand Staircase Escalante, which is our destination for today, is nestled between two national parks, Capitol Reef and Bryce and the views on this drive have just been epic. So, so beautiful. There's nothing like seeing these like red mountains. It's so unique. I rolled the window down to take in this incredible view and no joke, about 20 flies have flown into our RV. It's gonna be Mexico round two. Oof, they're still flying in. Uh. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're gonna like nasty up the window so bad. Oh, they're everywhere. Got it. Sorry about you, homie. Mm, I'm not confident about that one. You gotta confirm the kill. Got him. Confirm the kill. There's one up here flying around in front of the camera, taunting you. He's actually right over here. There's yeah. three right there. So. Yeah. Oh done. god. This is not a bad lunch view. It's a shame we're not eating outside and enjoying these views, but... I was just gonna say, we should set up the camp chairs, but... Mm -mm. Not with these flies. <laughs> mm -mm. When I saw you in the moonlight 
I just have my play And it goes away a little time I'll give a memory's grace We were choosing opportunities Over wrong and right Was it target worth the vanity? I'm glad we came this way. Like it looked crazy, twisty, and turny on Google Maps, and it is. And it's actually steep, but so worth it. I wouldn't want to be anything bigger than Maggie, but this is definitely, definitely a must do if you're coming through Utah. This drive is dope. Give yourself tons of time if you're gonna do this drive. You, we could have easily spent an entire day just taking it easy and stopping at all the scenic overlooks. We got started late per usual. Now the sun is setting and we gotta make it to our campsite, hopefully before it gets dark. Doubt it. <laughs> Ooh, look at that cheesy goodness. We weren't gonna get there before it got dark and we had to pass the town of Escalante so we just embraced the darkness and decided to get Mexican food. This was voted one of the best restaurants in Garfield County, so. So how'd you, how'd you know that? <laughs> There's signs the everywhere, right they're pretty proud of it. So we ended up getting some homemade nachos, bean dip salsa. I got blue corn tortillas with pork, chicken, and it has this beautiful sauce on top. And Dennis got a chimichanga with pork. So there are several cute restaurants in the town of Escalante if you're driving through here that are worthy of a stop. And for those of you who have been asking in our videos about what has been on my arm, this is a continuous glucose monitor from Levels. It helps me monitor my blood sugar and understand what happens to my body when I eat and drink different things. They did hook us up with this so we could give it a try. If you're interested in learning more, I'll have a link down below. I'm not gonna be able to fit this in my mouth. I'm gonna try though. One bite, here we go. <laughs> this is a gem. We couldn't say no to tacos today because Mexico's independent. Day. Huge celebration, Mexico. Wish we were there. But good news is, we're going soon. Well, we made it. That was a treacherous 25 minute ride. Well, it was supposed to be 25 minutes, but on our scooter, which is not made for roads like that, I think it took closer to like 45 minutes for us. It was not a very fun ride. But dude, this is awesome. This is called Devil's Garden. It's in Grand Staircase Escalante, and it's just an area filled with a bunch of really unique, cool hoodoo formations. There's even painters out here right now. I guess there's an open air artist festival where uh, artists from all across the country come to Grand Staircase Escalante to paint beautiful scenes in the open air. Yeah, this is definitely worth a visit. There's just paths you can walk all around and the hoodoo formations are so, so cool. This area was formed in the last Jurassic period when dinosaurs weren't quite at their peak, but they would definitely be roaming around here. And the landscape obviously looked very different than we see today. It would have been sand dunes and cliffs overlooking the ocean. It's just insane to try and think about what that looked like millions of years ago and, and how that's what created these beautiful formations today. I love coming out to Southern Utah. It's just such a unique, unique place. This is a really rad spot. There's a lot of little cool nooks and crannies that you can explore, which give you like a, a slot canyon type of a vibe. For sure. And you know what I don't see, at least not yet, is a bunch of people's names carved in a bunch of the walls. So seeing as how we're sharing this with you, maybe let's try to keep that to a minimum. How about none? This is cool. It's kind of like a slightly larger slot canyon. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing any slot canyons on this trip. What are you talking about? We're doing one right now. That's not a true slot canyon. Slot canyons, when they get really narrow. When they get dangerous. There are really cool slot canyons to do here. There's Zebra Canyon. There's also Buckskin Gulch, which is over by Kanab. 
Both of them look absolutely epic, but they are about chest to waist deep in water because there's been lots of rain as of lately. So you've heard the wet season is pretty much from September until like early June. So really just June, July, and August are, are your driest season here to hopefully have no rain in the slot canyon. But yeah, we've tried twice now to go in these slot canyons and every time it's always like way high water. People do it, but we ain't those people. We're not that hardcore. We're not that hardcore. <laughs> we'll just look at pictures and go, wow. <laughs> these dried bits create this really unique pattern and when you step on it, it's like the funnest <laughs> feeling. I really do love it. Like, tell me that's not fun. The next day we continued our explorations, picking back up on the drive through Grand Staircase Escalante. Mules and horses and buggies were used to travel the unique landscape until 1940, when the CCC built Highway 12. The road cost millions of dollars to construct and took nearly five years before it was completed. Today, most vehicles, including big rigs, can drive the scenic byway in a matter of hours. Although the road is not for the faint of heart, drivers should be prepared for super windy and very steep roads. We decided to stop at a popular hike called 100 Hands, named aptly for the 100 hand-shaped pictographs that were etched into the sandstone walls by the ancestral Puebloans who frequently migrated through the Escalante staircase. The petroglyph panels found here can give a glimpse into what the lives were like for the over nine tribes that called this region home. This is crazy, like taking a step or two back from the wall, the snake that I noticed over here underneath the longhorn sheep gets way longer, it goes way over here and then ends in like a spiral. I really wish I knew a little more about what these meant. You know, obviously, this is probably what they were hunting back in the day, main source of food, stuff like that. But the snake to the spiral, like this is another everyday occurrence, I would imagine. But why does it end in a spiral? What does it mean? What does it mean? It's beautiful though. Sadly, many of the pictographs here have been defaced by visitors etching their names into them. Some even attempted to cut out the carvings for illegal sale. Whenever you visit historical sites like this, please do not touch or deface any of the artifacts. And remember, you're on sacred lands that should be respected. This is just a beautiful hike. It feels very much like Zion. We are really close to it. It's gorgeous. I wish you could be here to experience this. If you haven't been to Utah, you need to come visit. It is so worth it. The next day we made our way to Coral Pink Sand Dune State Park. This super rad and somewhat hidden gem is just an hour's drive from Zion National Park, and in our opinion is a must visit on any Southern Utah road trip. The sand dunes are estimated to be around 10,000 to 15,000 years old. Strong winds between the mountains erode the iron-rich Navajo sandstone, creating sand that is blown into the valley where coral pink sand dunes lies. The ever-changing mounds of beautiful orange pink sand can be as tall as 100 feet. It is one of the few places in the world you can see coral pink dunes. What a unique place. We've been to sand dunes in Colorado at the Great Sand Dunes National Park and in Michigan. And this does have those vibes, but the like orange pink color of the sand makes it so, so unique. This is also a super popular place for OHVs, which looks like the way that we would want to explore it. But this is definitely worth visiting. It's so cool. Got the goods. I'm so excited. Let's go do this. <laughs> They gave us wax, so we will definitely just soar down the dune. What do you mean? Like they wax it for us? Yeah, and then we reapply it each time, so I have wax. Oh. This was 25 bucks, though. Really? Yeah, it's kind of expensive, but... Worth it. Memories. Memories. Let's do this.
worth it. It was so much fun. For sure worth the $25. That was like a highlight of this experience for Southern Utah, for sure. This is so nice. <laughs> what are you gonna do with that? Oh, you're filming? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs>